Got a little one that's trying to climb on everything in your house? For less than $60 in a day of work, you can build this. Just look at that smile. If you got a little one like ours, you know the struggle is real. Our one-year-old is super adventurous and climbs on everything. Furniture, appliance doors, low shelving, the stairs, you name it, he's on it. And our stomach sinks a little bit every time, thinking he's going to hurt himself or break something. But we don't want him to stop exploring and we want him to continue to develop his skills. So we made this Pickler Triangle to provide a controlled environment for him to climb and play while reducing the risk to himself as well as the risk to our house. But will it actually be safer and reduce the risk? Let's find out. We started off by breaking down 2x4s into 4 4 foot lengths and cutting 1 inch dowel rods into 10 pieces at 2 foot lengths. I'll include a full list of the materials and links in the description below though. I wanted to make sure all the edges were nice and rounded over and I found this 3M electrical tape container to be perfect for the ends of the 2x4s. I marked the legs along the center line every 10 inches and this was going to be the spot that I was going to make a hole that I was going to set the rungs that would be used to actually climb the pickler triangle. The 10 inches was driven by something I saw from the Consumer Product Safety Commission so stay tuned and I'll show you what that guidance says in a minute. Over at the drill press I used a 1 inch Forstner bit to make 3 quarter inch deep holes for each dowel rod. So while I snack on some sunflower seeds and get this all sanded down, let me explain to you the reason I have the 10 inches on center spacing for the rungs. It all came from this handbook, the Public Playground Safety Handbook. And in this handbook, they give some guidance on entrapment. And entrapment is when a child gets his or her head in between two parallel bars and then because they rotate their head, uh, they freak out and no longer can figure out how to pull their head back out. So what the guidance says is they recommend the spacing be less than 3.5 inches or greater than 9 inches. So I thought the 3.5 inches or less was way too close of spacing for these rungs, so I erred on the side of going with 9 inch spacing. And since these rungs are 1 inch in diameter, having them at 10 inches on center will give me the 9 inch spacing. But I'm not going to lie, I'm a little worried this is way too far apart, so we'll just have to see in the end if I need to make a modification, we'll do it. So one day we were cleaning up Atlan's room and Lauren was like, hey, on that triangle, can we make it collapsible? I was like, bro, I'm doing everything I can to make it safe and you want it to collapse on him? She was like, no, silly. I want it to break down so it'll fit between the crib and the wall. And I was like, well, why don't I just make it to clean up his whole room too? And she says, well, that would be nice. All right, so we got something new we got to do, but I actually don't think this is going to be too bad. I think I get the perfect thing. Check this out. <clears throat> so I have these little star knobs, and these are mostly used for T-Track, but I think what I can do is basically modify this knob to where rather than just being a threaded knob, it actually has a um, basically like a bolt coming out of it, and then I can use that to thread into a nut cert that's inserted into the legs of the triangle. All right, so more on that in a minute. Let me explain to you first how I laid out my triangle for the safety of my child. I actually explained this through this whole video, but I got a little long-winded, so let me just give you the skinny on it. So you're gonna want the width of the triangle to be as wide as the height or wider. And the reason you want to do this is because it brings the center of mass of the triangle closer to the ground. And that's important because as your child's climbing up this pickler triangle and gets toward the top, that's going to pull the center of matter mass toward the top of the triangle. And if it's too narrow and tall, your center of mass is already going to be toward the top. And that'll result in once they get to the top of the triangle, it wanting to tip over. So if you can set the width the same dimension as the height, you'll be in a good spot as far as the triangle being stable when they're climbing on it. 
Now I just laid out my triangle on some pieces of plywood to elevate it up off the table and then toward the top or the peak where the two legs meet I had a piece of plywood laying uh, underneath the legs that I could use to trace out the legs on it and this would be the piece of plywood that I would cut out that would be fixed to the legs that actually lock it in place using that star knob that I talked about a minute ago. By the way, don't forget to knock off all the sharp edges for any outward facing pieces on this project. They can be pretty sharp for the delicate skin of a child. So while I'm getting ready to assemble the two sides of this triangle, my better half is doing what I can't because I don't paint. So while Lauren finishes up the painting on these rungs, let me go back to that star dom I was telling you about a little while ago and show you what I wound up doing to make that work. Because I just bought these hex head bolts and these actually fit down in it perfect. And so I will just thread these in and you can see that nut or the bolt goes down in there nice. And what I'll do is just put a little thread locker on the threads to make these basically a single piece. And then that is the perfect length to go through the plywood into the nut cert and uh, help lock that pickler triangle, triangle down. So I was just roughing out the location for all the fasteners on the center line of these legs and everything was going good until I made this mark right here and this was a critical error and you will see why in just a little bit. I laid a few brads with their heads right on these holes I drilled in the legs and then took the piece of plywood I cut out and pressed it down firmly into those brads and this transferred that pattern to the piece of plywood so then I could know where those marks are and drill them out and make it match up perfectly. This could then easily be transferred to the piece of plywood on the other side of the pickler triangle by just lining the two pieces up and drilling holes all the way through. I then drove a couple screws in to hold this piece in place while I drilled the hole and set the bolt that would actually be the pivot point for the leg. I then took this one screw out and upsized the hole because this would be the spot that the star knob would actually be used to lock the leg in place. put a little finishing paste wax on the threads of this nut cert and that'll help it kind of ease into this wood without it splitting. This was the moment I realized I had a pretty big issue. Uh -oh. The gap I left either wasn't big enough or the hole that I drilled here um, was slightly off center of the board, which looking at it, I can tell it was. So now what's happening is that I can't close it any more than that um, because these are rubbing against each other. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is shave off some of the inside of this board so that it can close all the way. All right, let me help you learn from my mistake here. So let's say this is the end of our leg that we want to drill our hole to put our bolt that the leg is going to pivot around. 
Now the end we've rounded into a curve, and if we were to continue that curve into a perfect circle, we would want our hole to be in the dead center of that circle. And because this leg is made out of a 2x4, we know that the width of the 2x4 is 3.5 inches, so that means the radius of this circle would be 1 and 3 quarters of an inch. Therefore, if we put our hole at 1.75 inches from the side and 1.75 inches from the top of the leg, that would mean that we would always have 1.75 inches of material between the center of that hole and the outside of the leg. However, this is the hole that I made, which is not 1.75 inches from the top of the leg, which is why the leg is binding whenever I'm trying to close it. All right, so I think this new thickness or width will work. Um, I just need to round over all these edges now and sand this back down, try to make it look a little round. These uh, legs are definitely gonna be off center now, but um, there's still plenty of material. I'm not worried about it breaking or anything like that. Just a quick tip, the reason we didn't paint the ends of these rods was for the wood glue. Having a wood to wood bond is a lot stronger than having a paint to wood bond. While the wood glue will stick to paint, it's just not as good as if it was unpainted. All right, so I brought this back out to the shop to do a slight modification. What we noticed is after a few days of him trying to climb on it, these rungs are just a little too wide. I did my best to follow what the guidance was. This nine inches is just too much right now. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to, on just one side, add a rung in between each of the existing legs. I'm not going to attach these new rungs like I did the original steps. Instead, I'm just going to anchor these with a screw that's holding them from the outside. And that way I can take them off later if I want to and return it back to the 9 inch spacing. So one thing I'm kind of worried about before I go and anchor these dowels is the wood actually splitting as I run that screw into it. So I want to make a little pilot hole to avoid that. So one thing we got to do is find the center of these dowel rods. Uh, so let me show you a little trick that I use to find the center of a round object such as a dowel rod. So you're going to want to use a ruler or carpenter square. I like a carpenter square and you're going to set it to half of the diameter of the dowel rod. So in this case, it's a half inch since these are one inch dowel rods. Then you'll take your measuring device and line it up from one edge of the dowel rod and make a little line uh, wherever the end of that uh, measurement is. So it's going to be pretty close to the center. Then you'll just continue to rotate your dowel rod 90 degrees and each time you rotate it, make another little line. Once you've done this four times, you'll wind up with this little tiny box in the center of the dowel rod. And that little tiny box would be the dead center of the dowel rod. You can use this little trick to find the center of any round object. So what I'm gonna to use to anchor these new rungs are these Spax uh, T-Star wafer head screws, I believe. Um, this is in no way a sponsored video. Maybe it should be though. So Spax, uh, if you're watching this, reach out to me. Maybe we can do something in the future. I really like your products. But anyway, um, these uh, T-Star these wafer head screws, um, I've used them a lot before and they work awesome at actually just sandwiching two pieces of wood together with the shape of that head. So I went ahead and just started all the screws through the legs and just got the tips to barely poke out on the inside of the legs. 
And then I would just take the dowel rods and since I already have the pilot holes in place, I would just um, kind of start inserting the, the dowel rod to where the pilot holes catch the tips of the screws. And you can kind of just feel this as you're putting it in place. And once it's uh, both sides of the dowel rod are caught by the tips of the screws on each side, you can go ahead and just anchor it in place. So no need to actually measure and try to make sure it's lined up with where these screw holes are. Our little man loves this thing and we love that he's enjoying climbing on it. It's preventing him from hurting himself as well as damaging things in the house. We also built this ramp to go with it and he loves climbing up and down this ramp. If you want to see how to build the ramp, click on this video right here. Otherwise, until next time, take a chance and build something.